Hello students, it's Dr. Sansom here, and we are going to do a quick review of things that you learned in Chem 105 with regard to thermochemistry. So we're going to be talking about delta H and delta G and delta S. We're going to talk about how you calculate them from tabulated values and how they're related to each other. And finally, at the end, we're going to talk about how we use similar but different rules when we are manipulating equations and we need to consider the equilibrium constant instead of those thermodynamic values. So the first thing is Hess's law. This is something you learned in Chem 105 that allows you to determine the delta H of a reaction by taking advantage of the fact that enthalpy is a state function. So if we want to get from this top place down to this middle place, and we don't know exactly how to get there directly, but we do have information about how to go a different way. We can add up the path that gets us to the same place. And because it's a state function, the, the value will be the same, um, regardless of the path that we take. So there's a few rules that we use when we're using Hess's law. The first is if we have the reaction reversed, the sign of delta H will change. So for example, N2 plus O2 makes 2NO. That gives us a delta H of positive 180 kilojoules per mole. And if we reverse the reaction, it's exactly the same, but reversed, all we do is we switch the sign here. So now it's negative 180 kilojoules per mole. If you think about the reaction um, and like a reaction coordinate diagram, it makes sense that if you started out low and went high, and then you go in the reverse direction, you're starting at high and going low. So the sign would change. Second rule, if the coefficients are multiplied by a number, then delta H is multiplied by the same number. Now I said integer here, but actually it doesn't have to be an integer. Sometimes you'll see one half or something like that, and that's okay too. So um, in this case, instead of having two and O, now I have six, so I've multiplied by three. So all I do is multiply my delta H by three, I get negative 540 kilojoules per mole. There's one additional rule, which is when you add them together, you're going to add up the delta H's. I guess that's not on here. So <laughs> anyway, here's a problem that you can practice with. We have this reaction. We want to find the delta H for this reaction. And we're given these other reactions to work with. We know the delta H's for those reactions. So um, what we're going to do, oops, what we're going to do here I want you to pause the video and I want you to see if you can do this, okay, on your own or in a group. Um, see if you can do this, but I'm going to also then work it out for you. So essentially here, we have our C2H5OH over here on the left. My strategy is start at the left, work your way to the right. And if you have anything that's confusing, like in this case, oxygen is in all of these equations, we're gonna leave that for the end because it'll probably work itself out when we take care of the other things. So first thing I notice is that this one is on the left. So I'm gonna to wanna to reverse this equation. So I'm gonna need a positive 277.7 and this equation written in the reverse. Next, I've got three H2Os. I have H2O down here. So I'm gonna to need to multiply by three for that one. I have two CO2s. I'm gonna to need to multiply by two here for that one. So when I add those all together, I don't have the solution worked out for you here. Hold on just a moment. Ding, ding, ding. So when I add these all together, I'm going to get negative 1234.7 kilojoules um, for my overall delta H for this reaction that's written here. Now, I also want to remind you about standard enthalpies of formation. And these are the ones that you find in the tables in the back of your textbook. And a standard enthalpy of formation is the amount of enthalpy to form exactly one mole of a substance from elements in their standard states. Now, normally when I write words up here, not all of the words are important, but in this case, pretty much all of the words are important. So when we're looking at a standard enthalpy of formation, we have to form one mole of the product. In this case, you can see we're making one mole of gaseous water. The second thing is we're going to form it from elements. So I have H2 and O2 over here. That's the natural way they're found in nature. 
um, elements in their standard states. So it has to be oxygen gas, even though oxygen could exist as a liquid, um, that wouldn't happen under normal conditions. So the standard states are the way that we find them like on the periodic table. Sodium would be a solid, um, H2O2, Cl2, Br2, those are all diatomics. So we would put them diatomics. Mercury is a liquid, uh, et cetera. So as they appear basically on the periodic table, if we found that element in nature. Okay, so there have to be elements over here. You can't have any compounds. They have to be in their standard states and you have to be forming one mole of water or in this, in this case, water, one mole of whatever the substance is you're trying to get uh, in the product side. So you can have, for example, here, like a fractional coefficient and that's okay because the rule is you've got to make one of these. You can't make two of them. So you can't multiply by two to get rid of that. Okay, so for this one, the delta H for this reaction is negative 241.83 kilojoules per mole. I can just look that up in a table because I look for H2O gas and it'll tell me what the delta H naught of formation is. So these, the symbol here is delta H naught indicates standard states and F is formation, delta H naught of formation. And sometimes I'm just going to tell you the delta H naught of formation of water in the gaseous state is this value. And I won't give you this equation up here. Okay, I'm not going to give you the equation, but I will give you this value. So you have to know what a standard enthalpy of formation is. So you know the chemical equation that corresponds with this information that I've given you. Um, by definition, the delta H naught of formation for elements in their standard states is always zero. So H2 gas, zero. O2 gas, zero. Sodium metal, zero. Okay. Now, which of these would represent a standard enthalpy of formation? Take a second and figure it out. The correct answer here is going to be A. How do we know? We're making one mole of the product and we're making it from elements in their standard states. Answer B is incorrect. Even though we're making one mole of product, we've got a compound over here, carbon monoxide, and that's not allowed. And in the last one, there's a whole bunch of problems. So uh, every, all the rules are broken. So now I want you to look at this problem again. And what do you notice about the reactions that I gave you? Turns out they are actually standard enthalpies of formation. So can we do this a different way? I'm going to share my screen and work this out for you. Okay, so we had this reaction, ethanol, This is the reaction that we were trying to find the enthalpy of formation for. Now, before we did this complicated mess where we wrote the equations backwards, we wrote the equations forwards, and now we're gonna do something different. And I want you to notice it's gonna result in the same answer. Because they gave us the delta H naught of formation of ethanol, it's negative 277.7 kilojoules and the delta HF naught for CO2 is negative 393.5 kilojoules, and the delta HF naught for H2O in the gaseous form is negative 241.8 kilojoules. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add up products minus reactants. So I'm going to need three waters, two CO2, and then I'm gonna subtract the reactants minus negative 277.7 and 
I would also subtract out the oxygen, but because it's an element in the standard state, we're gonna have zero there. When I add these together, I'm gonna to get negative 1234.7 kilojoules. It's exactly what I got when I did this problem before the long way. So this rule of products minus reactants is really just an application of Hess's law. And Hess's law is a more general rule that we could use for any type of equation, even if it weren't a standard enthalpy of formation. So again, writing this out, we would have the products minus the reactants. We have some other things here. This is the sum of all of the products multiplied by their coefficients. This is the sum of all of the reactants multiplied by their coefficients. We can use this same process if we're calculating a standard entropy or a standard free energy, where we do products minus reactants. And all of those things, delta H naught, delta S naught, and delta G naught are available in those tables at the end of the textbook. Okay, so now we have the delta H F naught for NO2 and N2O4. We wanna know what's the delta H naught for the reaction. What we're gonna do is products minus reactants. So we'll take 9.16 minus two times 33.18. There is an answer. <laughs> uh, just a moment here, negative 57.2. No. And this is uh, when we do that, we're going to get negative 57.2 kilojoules per mole for our delta H for this reaction using the standard enthalpies of formation. Now, we also learned about in Chem 105 and earlier this semester, we talked about delta G, which is free energy. And delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Free energy is defined as the energy available to do useful work. And the reason is we're taking the heat that's released from the reaction and we're subtracting out the energy that's going to be dissipated um, going into the randomness of movement and can't be used to do work. So um, our sign convention for this is if the delta G is less than zero, that will mean the reaction is spontaneous. And like we talked about earlier in the semester, depending on the signs of delta H and delta S, delta G is going to change. If we have a negative delta H that's favorable exothermic and a positive delta S, which is also favorable and increase in entropy, then our reaction will always be spontaneous. And you can see how that uh, changes if we have different signs of enthalpy and entropy. Now, what happens when we reverse a reaction? What happens to the equilibrium constant? You might be tempted to answer this question immediately. Oh, we just switch the sign, just like delta H. But I want you to actually just write a reaction out and then write the expression for the equilibrium constant and then reverse the reaction and write the expression for that reaction. And then I want you to see how they're compared to each other. And then you can answer this question. So pause the video and do that. Hopefully you wrote out your equilibrium expressions for the forward and the reverse reaction and you find the answer is that it is inverted. The new K is one over the old K. So in fact, that's the first of our rules for dealing with equilibrium constants. When we reverse the reaction, the new K is one over the old K. If we were to multiply by a coefficient, because when we're writing the expression, those coefficients go into the exponents, our new K will be our old K raised to that exponent. And if we add two reactions, rather than directly adding them together, we're going to multiply the Ks. So those are our rules for equilibrium constants. Take a moment and find the equilibrium constant for this reaction using the equilibrium constants for these other two reactions.
in order to get this, we're going to have to reverse the bottom reaction. When we reverse the bottom reaction, we're going to get 1 over 490. And when we add the reactions together, we multiply the case. So we'll end up getting 67 over 490 or 0.14 for our value of K. This tells us something about the equilibrium because we have such a small value for K, we know that the reactants here are favored over the products. And we'll end up with slightly more reactants than products at equilibrium. Last things here, what are the rules for using Hess's law for thermodynamic quantities? How do we calculate entropy, enthalpy, and free energy from tabulated standard values? And how do we relate them together? And also, what do we do with equilibrium constants if we're doing the same kinds of things we did when we did it with our delta H's and delta G's? So take a moment and write that out for yourself. That's the sound of my cat scratching her scratching post. <laughs> okay, so what are the rules for Hess's law? If we reverse the reaction, we reverse the sign. If we multiply by a number, we multiply by a number. If we add them together, we add them together. Pretty straightforward. What if we have standard values? We do products minus reactants. Remembering at least for enthalpy and free energy, elements in their standard state are defined as zero. For entropy, that's not true. You have to look up the entropy values for the elements, even in their standard states. Um, when we have these three things, they're related by the equation delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. And um, when we do these same kinds of transformations with equilibrium constants, the rules are a little bit different. So if I reverse the reaction, I'm gonna take the inverse of the K. If I multiply by a number, I'm going to raise the K to that number. And if I add my reactions together, I'm going to multiply the case. So that's the end of this lecture for today. I hope that's a useful review for you of thermodynamics that you learned in Chem 105.